So I got my first royalties check of the year the other day, and I'm not going to share my income. I think that's spiritually unhygienic in my opinion, and I'm not even remotely trying to flex like I'm going to be able to pull off any Dr. Doofusmurf level schemes with this amount of money in the check. But I will say God is good, and I'm very grateful for everything that he blesses me with, and we'll leave it at that. And this check didn't even count the work I did for CBS with my homie Woosil last year. And so when I looked at my check, I realized that most of this was coming from tracks that I either completely made from scratch or were collabs where I made the melody and so i really sat back and realized that making dope dark melodies has been paying off over time so i gotta let you know as a homie about the melody formula i've been using over the last year or so and even though i will be showing you a demonstration in this video you can go to this cook up here if you want to see a really in-depth real-time demonstration of one of these types of melodies and beats that i'll actually be sending to my sync agents and ars anyways let's get into it so the first thing you've got to have is a dope piano melody with half steps like i was saying to my email list the other day the apparent simplicity of this tip is is deceptive. We've got to know how to actually use the half steps to achieve various emotions. Otherwise, we'll be limited in our ability to make dope melodies. So check out that blog post from the other day if you want to know how to make your dark melodies more interesting overall. Other than that, yeah, pianos, just like use them a lot or use anything that imitates them, sort of like Rhodes or electric synth keys. They make a really nice bass for the melody. So here's a demonstration of that. So for this piano melody, I found this lounge piano in Decent Sampler and I wanted to keep the whole thing, this entire demonstration like using free plugins so i'll use them a uh, decent sampler throughout the entire thing for context this is all the master is this is basically just tr5 on the soft clipper the eq is not doing anything tonal balance doesn't do anything in terms of effects and then every the piano at least was routed into this sub bus that had this neutron here which is just the deep rich preset for pianos and then that's routed into my melody bus and then the rest of my melodies are routed into this melody bus with this neutron preset here another one just for equalization really just high passing and so that feeds into a couple of sends one for convolution here are the presets for that here everything else is just equalization to kind of tame some of the artifacts that come as a result of that convolution if you don't know what convolution is it's kind of like kind of like reverb it's not actually reverb but similar effect kind of like how delay is kind of like reverb but it's not reverb and then going off of that we've also got a delay send coming off of that melody bus as you can see right there and that's just got some outer space with this stranger things preset which i've tweaked and again all these presets that i'm showing you from neutron or whatever they're like the presets but i've like done a lot of tweaking to them to kind of like make them unique to myself so just to let you know that it, if you try to click them in they might not be the same for you but anyway context so that you know kind of like what these instruments are feeding into so you know why they might sound a little bit different even though i'm like saying there's no effects enough waffling so here's the piano with no effects pretty simple just minor chord then you get that half step right there then it just goes back and then we're just using that other half step right there so again just a simple piano melody with half steps and then i layered that with this which is basically just doing the same thing but an octave up and that comes in at the next four bars of the melody so it'll do something like this It's really subtle, but it kind of adds like a high end texture to it. And then lastly, I added these piano bass notes. And that's how all that's routed. Again, that's routed. The piano bass specifically is also routed to the drum bus just because I wanted it to kind of feel a little bit like a drum in terms of the mixing and the actual mix. But other than that, yeah, all of that stuff is just routed to the respective piano bus, which is routed into the melody bus. So now we start to add the effects to the keys specifically. And the only effects that I actually added to the keys was this halftime. So if we get in here and start turning that on, first was just this halftime. And this is where it starts to get dope. It's really rocking now. And then just this EQ for like a little bit of high passing, really just rolling off some of those low end artifacts. And that just sounds, and that helps it really tuck it with that piano bass. That's the main reason I did that. And that just sounds so dope. And so step two is a dark synth layer. Now this is optional, but I've noticed that it really helps you get that nice dark 808 mafia texture. It's kind of hard for me to explain, but I've noticed like Southside is particularly good at it. It kind of just is a really nice way to accent the keys or whatever like main body instrument you have going on in your melody. And so with that being said, I literally will just copy the piano MIDI that I used and then I'll do things like octave changes or half times to, you know, make it a little bit more interesting. So here's a demonstration. 
of that. So for the dark synth, I came back into decent sampler and what I used for the synth keys was this patch in um, a bank called Memo Play and it's literally free. It's a demo off of a paid pack and it's just this tragic cassette preset that loads in automatically. So I'll turn off the effects really quickly so you can just hear it dry. But again, this is already being fed into the melody bus like we were talking about earlier. And as you can see, I literally just copied, you know, the same melody. We're just using those same half steps. And I just pitched it up a couple of octaves. And then what I did for the effects was that I just fed it through some half time to start. So it sounds like this with the effects. And that's, here's the preset with that. And then I added some RC20, which is basically just the vinyl one preset. I basically will use the vinyl one preset every time or whenever I use RC20 period. And I'll just turn off the noise because for some reason I just don't like the noise. I'm, I'm not really sure why. And then I added some delay for width, which is literally just the widen preset from Fruity Delay 2, which I will always use. Like anytime you see me using this delay, I promise it's 100% this, but it's it sounds so good. So I use it every time. That's just so nice. And then with the piano and everything, it just, it's such a nice layer. So step three is strings or monophonic lead synths if you're doing more of like a synth textured melody. So these can be used to build subtle harmonizing motifs that make the development of your melodies more interesting. Again, here's the demonstration. So since this beat was more acoustic, I decided to go with actual like acoustic strings or things that simulate those. And they were both from Decent Sampler as well. So this first one is from a Venus Theory um, free bank. It's a demo bank from something he has. It's called Alt Strings and it's really dope. So it's this cello fracture tremolo. It's kind of like an ARP texture. So let me just play it so you can hear it. It's actually a really good sound. And so the tip that I can give you here for making like harmonizing melodies is like the fifth of any chord really gives it a lot of like emotional tone. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not saying that the correct way. So if you have like a better way of understanding music theory and like chord tones, like definitely let me know. But I like I've noticed that about the fifth. The third is helpful too. And even the sevenths and the ninths, they all do their own thing. But specifically for triads and even bigger chords at large, like the fifth is such a driving note. So if you can use that to just be kind of like the foundation for whatever motif you build, it can be very helpful. So the fifth for the chord that I used, which was a B flat minor, right? So a sharp was, is it was just this, right? So this is the fifth, this is the root note or the one, I guess this is the third and this is the fifth. So that's how that melody was built. And then, so what I did was I went to another string in decent sampler, and this is made by Venus theory as well. Our boy is trapping for real. I'm not going to lie. And this is free as well. And it is a, another kind of like tremolo texture or whatever. So let me just let you really hear it. So it's following that same melody from the one we just showed, except this one will like go up an octave for that next four bars. So what I did was I kind of had them play together as like a string texture in the overall melody and I sent them to the same track. And then the only thing I did for effects besides feeding it into the melody bus was just this EQ, which was to like kind of blend the sound into everything else that's going on. I have a video coming out on that pretty soon, actually. I kind of view EQ as like a blending tool, but anyway, here's what that sounds like all together with the effects. And then we bring in the rest of the melodies. So step four is my personal favorite. It's the bells or some kind of bell texture. Now I am very partial to bells. My members know this from the beat reviews. If you have bells in your beat, I'm pretty much going to give you a good score every time. So maybe I'm a bit off with this one here, but I have noticed that bells really do add a nice kind of atmospheric texture to beats overall, but especially to those dark trap beats. Again, you can either copy the piano MIDI or you can build out a motif kind of like we were talking about in the string tip for number 
number three. So here's the demonstration. So for the bell, I went back into Decent Sampler and I got this bank, which is called Interlaced and it's free. And so I went and I found this key preset called Glassic and it's really, really cool. So here's what it sounds like. Again, we're literally just following the chord. So instead of like stabbing the chords kind of like this, the way we were doing before, right and kind of like stabbing the chords it's just like like sustained and that's kind of how i how i played it so here's what that sounds like and again it's just following the same chord progression that we've been using so far and then what i did was i just voiced this last one down like that to kind of give the overall melody more body for like the way the bell fits in with everything and so what i did from there was i came into the miscellaneous functions of the actual um bell in decent sampler so i went from this plugin editor tab to this miscellaneous functions tab like that and then i edited the arpeggiator settings usually this x is the thing that will be highlighted so i picked this arpeggiate up option and then i changed the range to three and i changed the time to two and then i got this sound right here so now it's just arpeggiating the chord progression And that, I don't know, like when I started using that, that was like, it was, I just got really excited for this melody, but it got even more dope when I started adding the effects. So the first effect I added was portal and it was just this preset right here. I think, yeah, it was literally just the ratio chaser preset in the guitar and keys bank. I'm pretty sure. And so here's what it sounds like. And then I added this EQ basically just to fold the sound back into the rest of the mix kind of like i did for the other instruments and then some delay again for width anytime i'm using that fruity delay too it's really just for that widened preset and then a neutron for again just for some taming really some taming on the high end with this dynamic eq right here and then I did actually add one more bell that's going to be in the centerfold uh, V4 drum kit. And it's just this tubular bell. And then the effects for that are pretty simple. It's just outer space. Again, with I love that Stranger Things preset with these little tweaks that I have going on here. I'll change them, but usually it looks something like this. I don't always sync all the playheads, but this time I did. And it gave it that nice little like warping twist on the bell. And that just sounds so dope. So then like when you put it to when I put it together with the rest of the melodies, it just sounds like this and it sounds like deep and dark and like kind of like a horror movie. And that's just like dope. Step number five, last but not least, bass. Now, no melody is complete without a good bass line, in my opinion. The key with these is to find a really good bass patch or sample that you like, and then just always use it. For me, there's like this one bass pick patch from Repro One that is like my go-to for acoustic melodies. And then the cinnamon bass from the Centerfold Drum Kit is my go-to for synth melodies. But since I wanted to keep this video using entirely free sample packs from Decent Sampler, here's a demonstration following the theme we've been doing throughout this video. Okay, and then last but not least is the bass. And so before I show you like the actual bass melody which is pretty simple i wanted to tell you that it's routed into my drum bus which is just this ozone ozone nine stack and then it's also routed into this um stereo send that i use for like my bass inserts in my tracks and whatever just to give it a little bit more width so here's like what that looks like basically again this is all available i don't think i said it but this is all available in my preset packs but i like to show just like what's basically going on and everything so you can kind of see it pretty simple stereo um shape i love that kind of like delay that you can kind of create with this this is a really slept on preset honestly and then just some spectral shaping i can't even remember what that's doing honestly but it does add a really nice effect to my bass elements so going into that bass melody really quickly so here's the bass patch i came back into that interlace bank and there's a patch a bass patch called ghoul and it sounds really dope it sounds like this well not like that that's a couple octaves up <laughs> really nice and it's got like depth but it also has like width at the same time it's pretty dope and so here's what my bass melody sounds like for this and then the effects that i added to that was just radiator i did a little bit of high-end taming once i added radiator but radiator with these effects which is basically just a hint of too much preset so it's like really rough on that high end so that's why i kind of like tamed it just a little bit with that console EQ so that it would fit better with the rest of the melody. Speaking of which, now we can hear this in context with everything. 
Let's give this one final listen. So once the melody is done, just lock in with hard, well-mixed drums. Well-mixed cannot be overstated if you actually want to make progress, and the centerfold drum kit bundle can help you there too. Anyways, if you want to start making melodies that get you better beats, TV syncs, placements with artists, and money, start locking in with this formula. And again, you can peep the full demonstration somewhere appearing on the screen right now. It was my cookup from a few days ago, and it's inspired by Metro Boomin's production on that Spider-Verse album he did last year. Blessings to you. I will see you tomorrow. Peace.